We are all familiar with IPOs because it is the normal route for a private company to become listed in the stock market. But what about existing listed companies which wants to raise additional funds by issuing new shares? There are usually two ways to do so, a private placement or a rights issue. So the former is typically catered for high net worth or institutional in, uh, investors through a private offering. On the other hand, the rights issue refers to an offer for existing shareholders to purchase additional shares at a usually discounted price. So for the sake of many retail investors who see stars, when you see a document letter announcing a rights issue, fret not. All right, in this video, we'll look into all the things you need to know about a rights offering using sets as an example. Stick around until the end then we will talk about whether you should apply or not apply for rights issue. But before that, do help us to like the channel, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for more interesting stock ideas and learn how to invest for the better. In return, I will show you a financial mimi. Okay, with that, let's dive in. So first of all, let's understand why do companies want to issue rights. Okay, so we need to understand the rationale behind it. In general, the money raised from the rights issues is used for corporate expansion or a uh, M and A. The other common reason is that the companies want to tap on the rights issue to show up their financial position. So, for example, you have SIA and some called marine in the past where they are you know down in the in the cycle and they want to tap on the rights issue to get more cash for their operational costs all right for sets itself it is using the additional funding to purchase worldwide flight services for around 1.82 billion dollars so on top of it right on top of the rights issue it is getting a three-year euro denominated term loan and also their remaining cash balance to fund the whole acquisition so that is a very big acquisition we are talking about okay now let's dive into the nuances of the rights issues so first of all let's understand what is a right issue okay a rights issue is where a company gives all the existing shareholders the right to purchase additional shares on top of that each rights issue comes with a detailed announcement from the company concerned. So spelling out how the money raised will be used, the exact process behind how it will work, and the timetable of key dates. For SETS itself, they are doing a 323 rights to 1000 shares issue. Means an existing investor can buy 323 extra right uh, extra shares for every 1000 shares currently held okay so the price of the newly issued shares is fixed and is always set below the prevailing market price at a particular date in this case the rights issue price is at $2.20 per share representing a 16% discount to TERP okay so what is TERP it stands for the theoretical X rights price. So it's calculated based on the last transacted share price of $2.75 on the last trading day and the number of shares following the completion of the rights issue. Next, there are two types of rights issue. So this is something that uh, you may not be aware of. There are two types of it. One is the renounceable and the other one is the non-renounceable. So what are they, all right? So renounceable rights means that you can sell off or so-called trade your entitled rights on the market if you do not want to purchase it. The person who buys your rights will be able to pay for the rights and receive the mother shares. On the other hand, a non-renounceable rights issue does not allow the rights to be traded and your rights will expire if you do not subscribe to it okay then moving on right the next important thing to know okay is to look at the timetable many people tend to be shocked due to the short time frame 
that you can apply for the right shares. Typically within one to two weeks time. Okay, you can check the record date and the timetable of key events via the document letter that you receive or you can check it from the SGX website itself. Okay, luckily for us, it has already put the key dates into a nice table shown here and allow me to further illustrate on it. Okay, so the record date is 2nd of March 2023 where the rights offer is lodged with MES and SGX and the documents will be dispatched to the shareholders in a few days' time. So from 7 to 15 March is the Windows phase for the trading of rights. It usually lasts for around one week. And this is the period where you can buy or sell the rights as a separate counter called sets right. Now sets are okay in the sense, right? And you can go to the SGX and you can see that there will be a sets and R behind. Okay, so they will be able to be traded like normal shares during this window phrase. Okay, the downside is that usually, let's say if you want to sell, right? There may not be anybody who want to buy the rights from you. Okay, so this is the downside. And after the last trading day on 22nd, uh, 21st of March, CDP will usually take some time to process the money and application. And, and 29th of March is the final date where the rights are converted to shares and then credited to your account. The additional shares are now traded over the exchange. Okay. So now let's talk about how to apply and subscribe for the rights issue. Okay, so subsequently, if there are more um, rights issue coming up, either for REITs or for other companies, so how do you apply for them? Okay, the process is pretty similar to the IPO application. Okay, you can just go down to the local bank ATM and we will use the DBS ATM as an example, right? So before you start the ATM application process, ensure you have the following um, documents from the CDP you have received as well as the CDP account number and the bank account number linked to the ATM card. Okay, so you can head over to any ATM and perform the following steps. So you should select more services followed by ESA-IPO slash rights application. Okay, and then you click on rights application and you can follow the on-screen instructions to apply for the rights offering uh, by including your CDB account number and number of rights you want to apply for. And if you wish to apply for access rights, select yes. Okay, so important note here, if you have bought the mother stock from the SRS or CPF investment account, you will be notified via the hard copy letter, which will be mailed to the address registered within the bank. Okay, so you have to use the same funding source to apply for the rights in that case. Okay, that means if your shares are purchased with SRS, you can only uh, subscribe to the rights issue via the SRS funds. You can also find out more details on how to use your CPF to subscribe for the rights included in the link down below and where I will put it inside the description. Okay, and in conclusion, right, to end off, let's talk about whether you should subscribe to the rights issue. In theory, a rights issue, okay, will lead to a shareholder's dilution if you don't purchase the rights, of course. Hence, usually you may think that it is wise to increase your stake at a discounted price. However, I believe that investors need to dive into the reason why the company is raising funds in the first place and whether the rights issue will make sense in the long run. As previously mentioned, a rights issue is usually done to show up their balance sheet or acquire another firm, or in the case of a REIT, right, another property or property set of properties. Okay, So if you think that the rights issue will not help the company or the rights current you know, murky situation, then you may want to think twice about throwing good money after bad. On the other hand, if you think that the acquisition from the rights issue will have synergy 
and help the company to grow better in future, then it probably makes sense to subscribe for the rights issue. Okay, so with that, do subscribe to my channel and return to this video whenever you know any companies or rights have rights issue again. Okay, I know there will definitely be a lot more of them. So next up, if you want to check out five defensive Singapore stocks with at least four percent dividend yields, do check out this video over here. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching and ciao. Bye-bye.